If you had to point to a beginning, to the exact location of the Big Bang from which American industrial and economic power began its astounding and sometimes reckless expansion, it would be at the end of a percussion-driven, blunt-force drill bit lowered through a cast-iron pipe powered by a six-horsepower steam engine slamming down and down and down into the earth on a farm in northwest Pennsylvania. At a depth of 69 and a half feet, the operators of the drill struck what they'd been looking for. And on August 28, 1859, the crude yet sublime substance, rock oil as it was called at the time, presented itself on the Earth's surface. That discovery, like the Big Bang itself, is but a subatomic pinhole in space compared with all that has followed. Edwin Laurentine Drake and his hired man, Uncle Billy Smith, pulled the equivalent of maybe 20 42-gallon barrels of crude oil from the ground on a good day. The inhabitants of our planet weren't exactly starving for more in 1859, or at least didn't yet know they were. The first commercially viable gas-powered engine and the ensuing addiction were still a few generations away. Today's drillers produce an average of more than 90 million barrels of oil worldwide every day, and a lot of natural gas, too, which fuels cars, jets, freight trains, ocean liners, power plants, factories, and farm machinery, as well as the economies of republics, monarchies, and dictatorships around the globe. Nearly 100 countries representing six continents are in the oil and gas game, and many have been in it for a century or more. But the United States got there first. Russia was a very distant second, and only the United States can lay claim to having shaped the industry's prevailing culture, the tools of its trade, its financing, its administration, its ethic, and its reach. The organization of the great business of taking petroleum out of the earth, piping the oil over great distances, distilling and refining it, and distributing it in tank steamers, tank wagons, and cans all over the earth was an American invention thus noted the President Emeritus of Harvard in 1915. In fact, it could be argued the oil business as we know it today was the invention of one particular American, John D. Rockefeller. Rockefeller was there almost from the beginning. He created and husbanded the exemplar of the industry, Standard Oil. And along the way, he helped to popularize the idea of America as the testing ground where the extravagant possibilities and the outsized benefits of free market capitalism have been proven. As a junior partner in a Cleveland merchant commission house trading in grain, hay, meat, and miscellany when Edwin Drake made his strike in 1859, John D. Rockefeller watched the oil business unfold up close. When he entered the field in 1863 at age 23, he understood his best bet was to concentrate on refining the crude already taken from the ground and to leave to others the rather messy and costly process of actually getting it out of the ground in the first place. Within 10 years, Rockefeller had managed to get control of nearly all of the oil refineries in Cleveland, which had established itself as the nation's main refining center. Rockefeller's new corporation, Standard Oil, shipped a million barrels of refined oil in a single year. By 1875, thanks to the fire sale that followed the first frightening financial panic and depression in industrialized America, Rockefeller had taken control of every major refining center in the country. We were all in a sinking ship, he would later explain, and we were trying to build a lifeboat to carry us all to shore. The standard was an angel of mercy reaching down from the sky and saying, get in the ark, put in your old junk, we'll take the risks. Standard Oil's main product at the time was kerosene, which proved a welcome innovation in illumination. It was efficient, effective, plentiful, and reasonably priced. The most widely used lighting oil at the time, which was struck from soft coal, was dirty. Whale oil was hard to get, see Moby Dick, and dwindling in supply. Kerosene from petroleum, or rock oil, was just the thing to illuminate the clean, bright new future. Rock oil emits a dainty light, promised the new industry, the brightest and yet the cheapest in the world, a light fit for kings and royalists and not unsuitable for Republicans and Democrats. Farmers and city dwellers could afford to read well into the night. Factory owners could afford to keep their works open around the clock. Rockefeller's magic potion was a worldwide phenomenon. In 1875, before any European-based company was producing kerosene in bulk, 
75% of the output from Rockefeller's American refineries was loaded up and shipped overseas. Cash flowed back across the Atlantic. Standard's production capacity grew year after year. The efficiencies that followed, economies of scale, allowed Rockefeller to cut the cost of refining by more than 85% and to cut the cost to the consumer by 70%. Demand swelled, and so did revenues.